Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto, out here in our hot and humid garage. We've got the 2012 883 Sportster up here on the lift. And what we're going to cover today is changing spark plugs. Harley recommends you inspect them every 10,000 miles and replace them every 20,000 miles. In my opinion, if you're going to the effort of pulling them out to inspect them, just put new ones in. They don't cost that much. Now, the only tools you're going to need for this are going to be a socket wrench. I have a 3 8 drive ratchet or socket wrench right here. And then I have a 5 8 spark plug socket. You usually identify the spark plug socket because there's like a hex on one end of it. And then it's 5 8 diameter. Should be labeled 5 8 And down inside there, there's a little rubber grommet. And that helps to grab the spark plug. That way when you put it in there, the spark plug kind of stays in the socket. If you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can get what's called a deep well socket. If you own a socket set, deep wells probably came with it. This is a 5 8 deep well set. And just it... All it really means is it's just really deep inside and this will still slide down onto the spark plug. The only difference is you don't have that little rubber grommet so you have to be careful when you pick up the spark plug or when you pick up the socket you're going to be more apt to drop the spark plug. Spark plug insulators are made of porcelain so if you drop them they're pretty much junk because you're probably going to crash the, crack the porcelain. But that's your only real concern. This is an easy task. You can do this. Ooh, and you're going to need a spark plug gap engage too. But they sell those at your local auto parts store. But let's move in for a closer look and see what all is involved. Now when you remove your spark plug boot, you're going to want to grab the boot itself. Don't grab the wire, you might pull the wire off. But twist it back and forth a little bit to make sure it's broke free. Don't twist it around a lot, just a little bit back and forth. You should be able to grab the boot, squeeze it, and should hopefully pull right up on off and out of there. If it doesn't, you do run the risk of breaking the spark plug wires. If you break them, it's not the end of the world. You can get new ones at most local auto parts stores, or, or I'm sorry, you can get new ones at uh, your local Harley dealer or any of your local parts distributors. They're a pretty common thing. They're usually right there on the shelf. But let's look at spark plug removal. So we're going to set our spark plug down on there, and we're going to set our ratchet to Lefty Lucy. Snap it down in there. And since it's easy to snap a spark plug off, don't just grab it out here because you're going to do this and you might go sideways and break something. Support the ratchet with your other hand and, you know, that way you can keep everything nice and aligned. And then grab the socket and just lefty loose it right out of there. Now when you're done, you can usually just grab this thing with your fingertips and spin it out of there. If it's a little tight... You can take your spark plug socket and grab that and spin it on out of there. These plugs have about 22,000 miles on them, so we're going to see what they look like. Oh, it's not bad. Looks like it may be raining a tad bit lean. I'm going to have to investigate that with the tuner. I can tell that because of the white and light gray ashiness on there. Other than that, these plugs are in really good shape but we're still going to put new ones in there. So, we could just go to the parts store and tell them to look it up, but that's as good as the parts guy's computer. So we are going to take these with us. That way we can tell them, I need a DCPR7E made by NGK or whatever one you have. Just make sure you get the cross-reference same one. Brands don't really matter with these things. One's as good as the next one. But uh, from there... We'll move to the front spark plug boot. Pop that off of there. And lefty loosey that one right on out too. Also, hmm, slightly leaner. Well, I thought it was a good tune, I'm apparently going to have to reinvestigate a little bit. All right, but otherwise, in really good shape. Okay, so we have our new spark plugs here from the parts store. Now you're gonna to wanna to check the gap on these, and the gap is that little air gap right there. Hopefully you can see that. In between the electrode and the top elbow thing. I don't really know what that's called. 
But you can get a spark plug gapping tool from your local auto parts store. And these ones should be 32, approximately 32 thousandths of an inch. So you can take feeler gauges, but this is a little graduated gauge there. See if you can see that. And you put the thin spot in and slide it around. And that one's right there at 32.032. So from there, you can take a little motor oil or some form of an oil lubricant. I have some oil just off camera here. Put it on the threads. This helps to lubricate the threads going in because the cylinder heads are aluminum. And it will help keep the it will help prevent the spark plug from baking in there. So the next time you take it out, it will be a lot easier to come out. And when you thread these in there, make sure you're threading it straight. They should thread down in there with your fingertips. If it takes much more than that, like maybe you'll have to put the socket on it, you know, because if it takes much more than that, if you have to like <coughs> wrench them down in there, you might be cross threading it. You don't want to damage those threads. So from there, we're going to put our 5.8 spark plug socket on there, tighten them up. Now, you only really have to get these things tight enough that they seal up. Uh, the service manual calls for about 18, I think it's like 14 to 18 foot pounds. So I got my torque wrench here. So we're just gonna go until the torque wrench clicks. Right there. Now, if you feel like you're pulling on really hard and the torque wrench should have clicked, take the torque wrench, stop what you're doing, take the torque wrench, put it in a vise or put it in a big crest wrench or something and make, sure, make it click. Make sure it's actually clicking as it should. Then from there, we can move to the rear spark plug. Thread that down in there. Then again. right there that's as tight as it needs to be now from here you could technically just put the spark plug back on there however i'm gonna give you a little tip i have dielectric grease here that's non-conductive grease dielectric if you get spark plug boot grease light bulb grease all that stuff same thing idea being it's a non-conductive grease so what happens is it helps make the spark plug wire go on there easier. And when you do put the spark plug wire on, push it down until you hear and feel it click. Just like that. But also, this little bit of extra grease that's inside here, this will help, help keep water out. So if you ever end up riding in a really hard rain, uh, the water can get in there and then your spark plug, or the electrical shock that makes your spark plug fire can arc out to the side of the engine. And then your engine won't run right. With this dielectric grease down in there, it will seal that up. You could, you could stand here and hit it with a garden hose. It'll never miss fire. But that's it. Your plug wires are on. Everything's torqued to spec. You're ready to go ride. That's all I got.